All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Mondo Market TV. Hi, I'm Scott Romig, and I'm going to be your host today. Welcome to Mondo Market TV. Hi, I'm Scott Romig, and I'm going to be your host today. And we are starting the first in a series of shows on self-reliance and do-it-yourself projects. So today we're here. We're really excited. We're going to have a course on beginning beekeeping for the urban lifestyle. Now, before we get started, it's really important that right now you share this on your Facebook page, and that gets it out to everybody, share it with everybody that you know because you never know who may just love this idea. Make sure that you put a, a like on there or a heart and that gets it out to everybody. So right now, go ahead, click that button and share this on your Facebook page. We'd really appreciate it and it's gonna make the show even better. So I am an amateur gardener and every year I worry, I have probably 20 big boxes that I grow organic vegetables in and flowers as well. And every year I worry now if I've got enough bees around. And so this is a, a real reason why I really wanted to talk to Chuck today. Um, it's, or excuse me, Albert Chuback today, <laughs> sorry. Um, he is an expert on beekeeping and building these boxes. So, uh, Albert, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and some of your experience and, and where you came up with these great ideas? I've been a beekeeper for about uh, 20 years. Uh, I was a beekeeper helper prior to that, back when I was in high school. Uh, I developed the hive well. I was a general contractor and removing bees from homes. And I saw that the bees that I was pulling out of homes and walls and sheds and roofs and floors uh, was a little bit different than what we were seeing inside the beehives. Uh -huh. uh, so what I essentially did is took the beehive that we were using and divided it into four. That's what my hives are. It's a quarter box. Okay. And I discovered that it's just really easy to teach beekeepers in it. The bees are docile. It's uh, fun to play with. The bees are uh, tolerant of you and uh, gives you a chance to learn. And uh, you also get pollination and you get honey from it. Wonderful. Okay. And, and, and you do a lot of teaching out there, um, not only locally, but nationally as well. Isn't that right? I do. Okay. All right. So, uh, Albert, tell us a little bit about why, why do I want to have a, one of these beehives? In your case, uh, you're a gardener. Uh, most gardeners don't think of pollinators until their plants are coming out of the ground. At that point, the traditional hive that other people uh, usually have, um, if you went and bought one, you can't get bees. Uh -huh. You had to order bees early, early in the year. And even if you were to get one, you're going to have tons and tons of bees there. And most uh, gardeners and uh, those that have pollinator gardens don't want an outrageous amount of bees. They just want enough so that they have enough to pollinate with. And so something like this, we can populate it with bees uh, many different ways. And you can have bees in your yard. You can be you, you'll be comfortable around them because they're docile. And you'll be able to get what you need for pollination in your garden. So the outcome is that you get honey, but you also get more vegetables, more fruits, more everything. Okay. And they actually become a pet. Uh, you actually begin to walk around and hang around the bees and enjoy them being around your yard. All right, and really know what they're doing for you and, and probably for your neighbors as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, again, make sure that you share this right now with your Facebook page, friends, and, and get it out there so so many people can get out there and see what this can do for them. So, Let's just start kind of with the, with the basics out there. Some of the questions that, that I would have is, uh, are these safe for, for my children and pets to have out in the backyard? Yes. Um, dogs uh, love attacking bees. Uh, it's their little <laughs> fetish in the backyard. They'll look for the bees and they'll actually try to bite them. Uh -huh. uh, but other than that, Kids can be around these. Matter of fact, I teach my system uh, extensively to children uh, because the bees are docile. 
and the hives are small, uh, people are, or children are automatically drawn to it as oh, yeah, being it's bugs. for them. Absolutely, yeah. And kids want to learn what's going in, going on inside the hive. So for a, a child, for pets, uh, but understand dogs do want to eat bees. Uh, at least some do, the bigger ones do. Uh, but they're easy to have in your backyard. There's those that I know that have apartment patios that have it sitting right on the table, right where they're eating, and the bees come and go, and they get to watch the bees coming back with pollen on their hind legs. Um, it's, it's a good place for the bees. It's private, it's protected, and it's never going to grow to an outrageous size hive. Okay, so if I'm, if I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, and I've, let's say I've got a backyard, I can easily put this up high enough that I don't have to worry about my pet getting into it, or even Correct. my kids, you know, for that matter, getting Correct. too high in it. But, but as far as these things swarming and, and going after something, that's just probably not gonna happen, just because of the type of bees they are, and they've got everything they actually need. Yep, the, the focus of these hives is to have young bees, which don't know how to attack and defend. Okay. And during that period is when you get to learn and have all the fun and enjoyment and sharing with your friends, uh, having company come to your yard and you take them to your beehive and you show them what's going on and um, you feel like you're a, a little bit more of an experienced beekeeper because you're able to show what's going on. Um, and it looks good. You have this in your backyard. Uh, your family and friends are drawn to it. What is that? Um, it's not a traditional painted white box that cracks and peels. And, mm -hmm. Uh, looks a little bit of an eyesore. Yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I know. I know. In in uh, when when I have my garden going, you know, in, in later spring and summer, I can't wait to if they don't just automatically go out in my backyard and check out my garden. I drag them out there, and you know, I want them to see just how beautiful everything is. Especially if I do have a good season with bees, man, my my vegetables look fantastic. And as for a gardener, to be a more rounded. Uh, gardener, shouldn't you have some source of pollination yeah. uh, in your own yard? I've literally had to go out there with a little tiny paintbrush and do it myself mm -hmm. sometime, and that takes forever. Uh, so having these guys working for me would be absolutely wonderful. So it goes hand in hand with a gardener. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's really something that you should have. Okay. All right. Great opportunity for you. And for the next 24 hours, on each one of these boxes, we've got a four, four box two box and one box, for the next 24 hours, now's the time that you're going to get the best deal. After 24 hours, the price is gonna go up, so now's the time to order them. Go to mondomarkettv.com to place your order there. Now, along with that, when you buy that in the next 24 hours, you get the magazine that Albert wrote. And this is an incredible magazine with an unbelievable amount of information in there for the beginning to moderate to expert beekeeper. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you put into that? This basically is everything that uh, a beekeeper wants to know and uh, wants to become familiar with before or during having a beehive. So it teaches you how to start. There's many methods of how to start your beehive, where to place it, uh, what to watch out for, um, what to inspect, uh, how to harvest, how to take your harvest and uh, extract it into bottles without having all the equipment that others have for that. Um, it, it takes you through everything you need to know with taking care of bees. And I think you have some information on there with regards to different regions and different parts of the country as well, is that right? Beekeeping is a regional thing. Every area can be slightly different. And throughout my book, I talk about the different regional issues, and you can become an expert in your own area. Okay. Uh, sometimes the books that are out there are specific in one area, well, but your area might be different than that book, so that book is really tough. Um, for me, I, I went through it and did it really basic. It's not tough. There's lots of graphics, lots of images, lots of pictures, uh, so that you can see what I'm talking about, not just uh, reading text. Okay, all right, so we're getting some things in, and I forgot to mention, I do have my tablet here, so if you wanna ask questions, please do. Um, Beverly uh, is already in interested in buying this. Um, it says, when do the second call, to oh yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a fantastic product out there if you wanna get started on this. Now, one of the questions that some people might have 
is, you know, um, what are my what impact is this going to have on my neighbors? Am I going to have a problem with that, or are they going to be grateful? I mean, how's that? How does that play out sometimes? You know, with bigger hives, it can be tough. Uh, these smaller hives, I can be standing this far away from the hive with a friend, and the bees are just coming and going. There's no aggression. Uh, the bees are just building and doing their thing. Um, neighbors that see the big hive feel threatened because they know what's in it. When you have these, neighbors come to it, they see it, their, their uh, defense is down because it, it catches their eye, and all of a sudden, uh, it's something that they don't care about. Um, bees aren't something where they're looking for victims. Uh, they're not like that. Um, and so you want to open the door to uh, a relationship with your neighbors, and so invite them to the hive. Let them see what it's like. Uh, introduce them to the bees. And believe it or not, you'll have your neighbor asking repeatedly uh, about the bees as though it's uh, a family member. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, and I imagine that, you know, it, with some of these, they may just think it's a, a, a bird nest or something. They may not even recognize it as, as, a, as a beekeeping unit here for us. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, not only are we looking at uh, the ability to pollinate your flowers, to pollinate your fruit trees, to pollinate your vegetables, but it's also a matter of getting some honey out of this. Now, you don't have to do that, but that's a definite advantage. So how much, um, you know, out of these, this is a, you know, a four frame, two frame, one frame, how, or single frame, um, you know, how much honey can you expect to, to get out of there in, in a season, let's say? Let's say we just take our region as an example. You know, we're in the, you know, in the kind of the desert here. And, and... In Utah, you can start uh, the four box mini uh, with two frames of open brood, which is referred to as eggs, larvae, and uh, nurse bees. And they can generate their own queen, make their own queen, and fill up that four box kit in one season and produce two gallons of honey. That's in the deserts of Utah. Wow. Now, when you think of how much honey a family typically needs, two gallons is pretty good. you got some stuff to give away. Mm. Yeah. And... And the processing uh, part of the honey is obsolete. Rather than having extractors and end cappers and spinners and all that type of stuff, you just take the frame out of the hive. Believe it or not, you can just you can have a brush, or I use my fingers, and I just shake the bees off the frame. You take the frame in the house, you cut it out, drop it in into a baggie, put the frame right back into the hive so the bees do it all over again. The baggie, you zip it closed, you squish it like a bean bag, uh -huh. pop holes with a toothpick underneath, and it drains into your favorite jar. Ah. No other processing. And so if you want to give the whole frame away, you can. But it's nice to just take the frame and put it right back in the hive. And then the bees have work to do again. They have to build it all over again, so they use up their, uh, their bodies, their uh, workforce. And that prevents the bees from building up so much that they have defense bees. So it's actually really good to be able to go through and uh, harvest the honey throughout the season. Plus, then you get all the different forage flavors throughout the year. The beginning part of the year, you would get things like uh, fruit, uh, all the fruit blossoms. Yeah, during the season, you would get other stuff that um, blooms for about two to three, four weeks all the way through the season. And so you're harvesting all those different things throughout the season. And so your honey flavor can change from the beginning to the end. You'll have lots of different varieties. And well, cool. it, just like your garden, you can have different things that are growing throughout the season. Take that back to your hive and you can have the same type of flavors within your hive from the same things that were in your garden. And so it really balances your garden and what you're doing in a way that you can see what the the nectar and the results of those things were that you planted. And you and you've told me before that that honey tastes different all over the world. You know, um, so you could have some things that are in, in other people's gardens that are growing that that could be bringing back those kind of flavors as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's take a second here and show this product. Now this is the the single one, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just show them how easy this is to get into, and, and maybe we get a picture of of what it looks like inside and where the bees come in and, and just tell them a little bit about this product. So the, the whole hive is meant to be secure. Um, most hives, the uh, parts that are uh, put together, 
they're all loose. And so if you move it, the lid can fall, uh, fall off, the bottom can break off, and then you have bees that are agitated, they're all, but in this case, there's locking clips that hold it together. So I'm just opening the locking clips. The top now comes off. When this I, is really good craftsmanship. This is all quality material. When I take it off, I do it really gently, mm -hmm. and the bees actually respond to that. When you're abrupt and uh, brash to the hive and the, the bees, they know that. And so just be gentle and be kind to them. And um, then there's a frame. When you go in, you don't typically take from the middle because that's typically where the queen is, and the honey is usually on the outside edges. So I'll just pull out a frame and I inspect it and see what's built. They usually start from up here and they build down. And once it's all built with beeswax, which is a type of bee fat, uh, then they start filling it with stuff. It can be filled with babies or it can be filled with nectar and honey. Um, once it's all done, you can take that again, cut it out, uh, drop that into a baggie, put this right back into the hive and let them do it all over again. Um, once this is full, you can add another box and another box, and so that's why the different kits. Um, and so that's as easy as it is. It's not a hard system. Matter of fact, it's a very easy system to learn with, and it's ideal for kids. Okay. And so this actually, so if you had to clean it out at the end of the season, this whole thing comes off. Mm -hmm. uh, the bees come in and out right here, um, and it's a small enough place that they can defend it. Is that right? That's mm -hmm. part of it too? Okay. Yep. All right, very yeah, good. It's meant to stay intact so that okay. you don't accidentally do something that causes them to be aggressive. Well, they get, no, okay. Very and good. so everything is secure. They clean up the whole inside. They disinfect it. And, um, but, oh, they do that. That's right. They do do that, don't they? Yeah. And so the, the nice thing is that they build it. They build it naturally. There's no plastics. There's no plywoods. It's all cedar and uh, stuff done by the bees. Okay. And so it's, it's a wonderful beehive, and it's ideal for many uh, applications in an urban setting. Um, and it's attractive. I mean, you do a nice job. There's fantastic detail on these. Um, and again, now is the time to get it, because if you get this in the next 24 hours, you're going to get the best price for these. And you're also going to get uh, the magazine that was written by Albert. Now, we have one more special feature for you. Uh, if you order this kit now, you can get Albert's courses that we have on another uh, website called Curious Mondo. You can get those for 30% off. So now's the time to get that. Um, we got a couple of comments here. Uh, and just make sure you give us a call at 801-330-9010 uh, if you want to take advantage of that. Um, also go to... Uh, uh, mondomarkettv.com to purchase these kits. Now, uh, Beverly Lynn, uh, she <laughs> makes a comment here, thank you very much. Um, unprocessed honey for free, you know? Think about that. Uh, you're getting organic, healthy honey for free, and you're getting your garden taken care of as well. Uh, Vicki Farr, this is so cool. Um, we, love, we love getting those comments, so keep those coming. Now, let me ask you, what else can you do with the honey? Uh, it's only restricted by your imagination. imagination. Okay. But are um, there some health benefits too? You know, honey is, uh, if you eat your own natural honey and you take about a teaspoon a day, mm -hmm. um, it helps fight against the local pollens that you have in the air. Really? And so that's good. Honey with uh, ginger is one of the uh, historically old uh, types of medicine. I mean, this has been um, around forever. I mean, even the Egyptians uh, were using honey mm -hmm. uh, for medicinal purposes as well, yep. weren't they? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what uh, Beverly's asking a question here, and I think it's a great question. Um, do you, when you're working with these and you're taking them out, uh, taking the, the honey out, do you need to have a bee suit? Um, <laughs> a bee suit is for your protection. Uh, you don't have to have a suit. You could have a veil. Uh, if you feel comfortable around your bees, uh, you wear what it is you feel comfortable with. Uh, if your bees are aggressive, then you need protection. If your bees are mild, uh, then it's your decision to decide what it is you're going to wear or not wear. Uh, a veil is the cheapest way to go. 
Um, a veil protects your face, it protects your eyes, it protects your uh, soft tissue, and uh, you can wear your own clothes. Your own clothes are comfortable, uh, they fit you. Um, I don't typically wear gloves because mm -hmm. I want to be able to feel what I'm doing. Um, but there's others that will want some type of hand protection. So you can have hand protection, you can have veil. But in most cases, I'll find that I'm, I'm not wearing it. Um, but just understand that you need to do what's uh, what you good feel for you. Mm -hmm. What you feel comfortable with. Okay. Now, um, the other thing I want to ask, and, and we've, we've kind of, you know, there's, there's stuff out in the media about, um, you know, the, a declining bee population or the collapse of, of, of hives. But what have, uh, you know, some of these natural disasters we've recently had, how have they affected the bee community? You know, I just came back from a conference where uh, they were discussing the losses this year, this last year. Uh, we have the losses that hit uh, Florida with the hurricanes. And the hurricanes don't just hit uh, the commercial guys or the backyard beekeepers, it hits all of them. And so the losses in Florida are huge. Then you get the flooding and the, the stuff that, have ha that happened in Texas. Again, not just the backyard beekeepers, but the commercial beekeepers. If it hits a commercial bee yard, there's guys that I've talked to that have 1,000 hives, 5,000 hives, 10,000 hives. And if you can imagine uh, a storm or a disaster wiping that out, that beekeeper then has to buy more bees and grow again. And then that beekeeper isn't providing bees for the local area because he didn't have any. And that's what those big guys are doing. They're taking these to orchards or taking these to fields mm -hmm. uh, and moving them around to help pollinate uh, because we do have a little bit of a lack of, of a bee community right now. Correct. And so then you get into California. You had the fires both in the north and the southern part of the state, which there's lots of bees in those areas. Then you have the floods, you have the uh, mudslides, you got, and so all the areas that we have lots of bees in our country uh, got really obliterated this year. And so this year will be a tough time for many beekeepers because it will be hard or expensive to get bees. Um, like you will learn in the class, the classes we taught, you can have one comb box and you can put a package of bees and that package of bees is an interest bearing uh, savings account with bees that you can keep on multiplying, dividing and getting all the bees that you need for your own and whoever's in your area that also has the little hives. And so it's a very easy way to build up. And instead of buying uh, a lot of bees, which is really expensive. You can be making your own, which is a locally mated queen and locally mated adapted uh, hot, uh, colony, which is ideal for beekeepers. Um, so this actually helps, especially at this time when everybody got hit so bad. So not only when you get this, when you get this product, when you get these hives, you're not only helping yourself, uh, you're helping your community as well. Uh, because we have had some natural disasters out there. And, you know, California, for instance, is responsible for something like 70% of the food. Um, you know, having, you know, again, it goes back to self-reliance um, and do-it-yourself, you know. Whether you have just a little patio uh, garden or whether you have a garden that's bigger like mine, um, there's a certain feeling out there that, that you get when you are producing your own food or you're giving food away. Um, or beautiful flowers away, uh, it's, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel it's more self-reliant. So take this opportunity right now and get this product. Now just go to uh, mondomarkettv.com and you can order either, either one of these three. And now during the next 24 hours is when you're going to get the best price for these. You're going to get this uh, magazine that was written by Albert, which is going to be indispensable for you as far as information goes. Uh, you won't have to search all over the internet to try to find um, you know, answers that may or may not have to do with your region. So take advantage of that. Now, um, Mike Parkinson um, wanted to know if you add one at a time uh, to get up to all four, or uh, do you start with all four and then and just fill, let it fill up, or how, what's the best way to do it? Good question. In the, in the publication, we have how you're to add boxes. Typically, you start with your first one. Your second box goes underneath so that it expands the babies, and they start a honey wall that goes on top of the first box. 
your third box and your fourth box go on top, and those are going to be primarily honey boxes. Um, there's another method where you can just have uh, it all set up, and you put bees in it, and you just go. Um, that to me is harder to inspect and learn from, and you don't know what's going on so much in the hive. Um, I like to start with one, learn what's going on, and then add more and you become comfortable around the bees and they're comfortable around you right off the bat. Um, you can also have one of these hives put in your yard. If you're in areas that typically have lots of bees, mm -hmm. so let's say California where they typically have lots of beekeepers with commercial uh, outfits or anywhere across the country. There's lots of colonies all over. And let's say that your yard is being bombarded by uh, swarms every year where you get these balls of bees that are hanging from the trees. Uh, take one of these, put them in your yard. Uh, there's uh, stuff out there that we can get that's uh, a bait uh, that attracts these swarms, which are worth a lot of money. Yeah. And you put this up, you put the bait inside, and you wait for those bees to find it and make it their home. And so th there's lots of people that do swarm hunting. Swarms, capturing swarms are a lot of fun. And putting a swarm in here, if it's a small swarm, you can put it into a small box, a bigger, you can put it into there. Um, and then there's ways in the magazine to divide them and play with them and do other things. But uh, if you're in an area that has lots of bees, you can capture bees. Uh, rather than having them go into your house and your soffits and your walls, um, it's cheaper to have them inside a, a box than pay somebody 100 or 200 or places like Texas, it's a $3,500 deposit uh, for people to come out to start to remove them from your homes. Ouch. So uh, there's some places it's by hour, and here in Utah, it's about $125 and up per hour to remove them out of your home. But once they're in the walls of your home, Look at the mess that's there. It's all the honey and all the wax and the propolis and the smells that are attracting things from the whole area, ants, mice. And so if you have a home that could be considered a, uh, an attractant to bees, put up a hive and have the bees go to that before they go to your home. That makes sense. All right. Okay, um, now, um, what, uh, what are some other things that you can tell us as far as the advantages of having this in your yard? You know, one of the big ones that uh, a lot of people miss is that uh, the, the traditional system of having bees is a really difficult system to learn. It, it seems like uh, there's a lot of people willing to teach you and help you through them, but the failure rate is high, there's lots of issues, there's lots of bees, there's aggression, there's lots of equipment that you need to buy for it. Um, this is the easiest system to teach a new beekeeper. Um, I refer to it as training wheels. Uh, before you jump into a really big hive where they're also teaching that you should get two at once, not just one. Wow. That and so like the expense is just yeah. huge and then you have a lot of bees and if you still don't know much, um, you could be really getting in over your head really fast. And so, and then you don't know how your neighbors are gonna react. You don't know how your kids are gonna react. You don't know what the area is uh, like for your bees. And so this is training wheels for a beekeeper or for your area. You get to try it out and see what it's like and you get the chance to learn what's going on in the hive, uh, see how it's doing its stuff. And once you're comfortable with it and everything is going well, you can always expand and continue. I find that most people like to stay in them because they're so docile. And they're still getting everything that you get in the bigger hives and you don't have to pay for all the other, other equipment. And so for learning, this is awesome. Uh, for kids, uh, this, there's no better training wheels than a hive that's small like this. And that's what I would want. I would want something that was uh, easy, to, you know, easy to learn. And, and the nice thing too is, is like anything else, when you're beginning to garden, uh, you know, you're, you're learning a new skill. You know, um, and starting with one or, or starting with a unit like this where uh, they're smaller than the traditional big ones, especially when you were talking about two box where, you, where you're going to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of bees, you know, starting out this way, um, like you said, you may never want, you may have no need to go any bigger and get all the honey that you want. I mean, how much honey can you eat in, you know, in a year? Um, so these are absolutely perfect. They're absolutely beautiful. Now, 
if I wanted to, what's, what's kind of the range? You know, if I had a bigger yard, would I, would I want maybe two boxes or just one? Or do they start fighting or, or going into each other's places? Or? No, bigger hives like to fight. Yeah. Smaller ones don't. These are all, now we consider all these small. Correct. Right. So if I had like an acre or something and I wanted one in one quarter and another Easy. one in another quarter, you could easily do you that. You could have six to eight of them all right in, uh, in one row. Okay. Um, I have pictures that come in where a guy will have a whole bunch on a wall. Oh, is that right? And there will be some drift from one hive to another, uh -huh. bees coming back. Um, then people actually are a little bit more creative where they'll actually color the front landing board a different color on each hive. Uh huh. And the bees will see that. And they'll and go they, to the right They no know which way. color is theirs. Really? Mm hmm. And so you can change the bottom entrance so that it's a color specific to that colony. And the drift, drifting from one hive to another uh -huh. will pretty much stop. Huh. Um, it's. Pretty fun. Okay. And so those are all things you get to learn when you start. Yeah. But when you have big hives, you don't get the chance to learn. It's just you're in behind the car, uh, steering wheel, driving, and you missed riding the bike first. And uh, this is just a different way to go. Uh, another thing that is kind of fun with these is with the bigger hives, you go until you fail. Uh, and failure is a pretty uh, high uh, percentage. With these, you can go until you fail, and you can get more because you're not talking about a lot of bees. And so uh, what I have is I have beekeepers that will go through, and they'll have multiple failures throughout the season, but still be successful at the end of the year. So with a bigger hive, you would have had to have multiple years to learn the same amount that you learn in one season with a little hive. Um, it's really a unique way to go, and for learning, there's nothing better. Yeah, I mean, having it fail is just an opportunity to to learn something from it. And 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 you touch on a lot of uh, of things in your magazine that you get if you order this in the next 24 hours with your kit um, about what to look for. I mean, because you want to inspect these, you want to look and and maybe be proactive to some of the things out there uh, that could affect your bees or your hive. And and. That's based not only uh, in general, but also in regions too. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Let's say that you have uh, a hive in California and you put your hive on the ground. Um, you could have uh, your little sugar ants in the hive within a minute of putting it on the ground. Well, that's something that you have to learn to stop. And in the magazine, it talks about it. You can have your hive in another area where you have uh, scratch marks on your bottom landing. Well, that's raccoon and skunk. Uh, they come at night, they scratch, the bees come out, and they gobble them up. And the way that you know that they were coming is the scratch marks. Uh. Uh, but those are all lessons that you need to learn. And you can have multiple years where you're buying bees for $150 a package, and you don't get honey because you had a failure that you had to learn. Well, rather than paying the $150 for a big package of bees for one hive, start off with something smaller where you're learning again a little bit at a time mm -hmm. and once you're successful and everything is going good and the bees are doing good you can take frames from your hive move them into your friend's hive and they'll create their own queen and now you have two colonies and you do it again three colonies four colonies then all of a sudden what you're having is if there's something that goes wrong you have people that you have already given bees to that are local bees because they were yours that you can take back and you can then recover uh, uh, from another problem um, you wouldn't do that in bigger hives no. people wouldn't give you frames because they're so big yeah, right and they're oh, coveted transform them and yeah and so with these you can move them back and forth you can take your box you can lock it up put it into your seat of your car put the seat belt around it you can take it to your friend's house you can look at the bees trade things back and forth and all of a sudden you have a sustainable apiary, which you would have never had before. Um, so the learning, opening up a, a hive and going through and looking at the frame, seeing the different cell size, learning what's go going on in the hive. Uh, what's the price of education? Well, I, if it's something that you enjoy, I mean, is there, is there, a, is there a price, you know? Um, Without education, uh, you're blindly throwing money and you don't know why things are going the way they are. Education is important. Okay. And 
these hives are all about education and a uh, natural way to take care of bees. Okay, so I buy this kit. I've got my mini hive, I've got the frames. What do I do next? How do I get started? At that point, you need to decide uh, how are you going to get the bees. Uh, in the magazine, in the publication, there's about nine, ten different ways for you to start uh, your colony. Uh, it could be that you buy a package, uh, but it will require maintenance within the month because they grow so fast. Uh, it could be that you, uh, there's somebody in your area that has bees, and all you need is them to shake out uh, uh, one of their frames of bees that have babies on them, uh, and buy a queen, which you can get pretty much most of the season. And then all of a sudden you have a colony that is small, growing with their own queen. Uh, you can start with another frame. There's places to get frames with open brood. You can start with a couple frames or more, and within three to five days, they'll create a queen cell, and it'll take a few days to cap it, and then there's 10 days for it to incubate, and then all of a sudden you have your own locally mated queen. Um, you can give it a name. It's your, your queen, so name it whatever you want. <laughs> Perfect. Um, kind of fun. You can put the queen's name on the front, and uh, when people come over, you can let them know that that is a queen, a colony that I raised. Uh, it's my queen. I created her from almost nothing. Um, and once you ha pick one of those methods and you go, uh, then it's a matter of inspecting and learning and seeing what's going on and why it's going on. Um, you can have kids, and kids can be fighting. And you can just uh, blindly say, just stop that. Uh, but you can also get into saying, okay, why is the fight? What's going on? Why is there a contest? What's the problem? Most beekeepers won't open the hive. They don't know what the, what's going on. The fighting that's happening, the contest, they don't know why. Whereas this, you open it up, you learn what's going on, and you solve the problem. And then hopefully you don't have to do it again. But even if you do, you learn the experience and you know how to recover from it. And so in... Uh in this kind of community, there are all kinds of guilds and places to get information from uh, with regards to someone that can get you started or someone that can provide some bees for you uh, as one of the options in, in getting started. Is that mm -hmm. right? In addition, in the publication, uh, there's a section at the back where there's an email and a phone number of the state organization in every state in the United States. And you can find your state, send them an email or call them, and they'll tell you where to go get bees and what you need to do. And so the publication has that. Um, and, and let me see that for just a second. Just so you know, it's part of what you're getting with this when you order this in the next 24 hours. This isn't just some pamphlet. This is so professionally done. And it's not a catalog. Yeah, it, it's... it's it's, a, it's got so many questions uh, that it answers for you. Um, this, is, this is like nothing out there on the market that you're going to find. Uh, and it's all uh, Albert's work here and research. Um, this publication is, is accredited, right? Uh, so this is something that uh, you can see uh, within uh, the experts out there uh, all over the place. Uh, this is an incredible, incredible resource for you. Uh, w when you get started, and it's provided free when you purchase this within uh, 24 hours. So take this opportunity and get it right now. In, um, go ahead. In, instead of getting beekeeping for dummies, right. beekeeping for idiots, <laughs> where, you know, I, I don't personally like the connotation of who they're addressing. Um, but there's a lot of information in those books that really don't help you necessarily to be a better beekeeper. Um, there's lots of anatomy, a lot of different things. I want to know what it is that's going to help me keep my bees alive. And so application is what is inside here. Okay. And um, so the type of stuff that you would be looking to learn from inside those other books are in here, but loaded with uh, photographs and descriptions. There's a glossary. So when you get into uh, beekeeping, there's a whole uh, slew of terminology that you might not understand. Um, there's a glossary at the back that teaches you what all the terms are. Um, there's lots of information that you really wouldn't find anywhere. Um, you have a, a home and there's bees that are going in and out of your shed, uh, out of the floor. 
I have a section in there to how to do cutouts. Um, I wouldn't suggest you to do cutouts for somebody that uh, is in a different property, um, but I list my little rules. These are my guidelines. And this is how you do a cutout. That's another way that you can start a, a mini hive is by uh, taking bees out of somebody's property. Um, there, it, the book, uh, the publication is loaded with information. Wonderful. So, what's the uh, what's the lifespan of of, of my bees? Uh, a honey bee lives four to six weeks. That's okay. how long it lives. Uh, a queen can live three to five years, okay. but we're having issues with queens where they're living for about a year. Wow. And so if you don't learn how to raise a queen, the likelihood is you're going to have a failure and you won't be able to uh, recoup from it. And so then the next year you have to buy bees again. This whole system teaches you how to rear queens. That's the, the main hub to this system, how to become sustainable. You learn how to raise a queen, then you can make as many as you want. If you want 50 colonies, you can then make it. Um, you wouldn't buy 50 colonies right off the bat. It would be too expensive. Right. And you wouldn't know what's going on. So it's not that your, your bees are going to be depleted in four to six weeks because of the die off of everyone else, but the bees or the queen, these things are constantly making babies, right? They're making drones, they're making workers, right? All the, the time. The queen can lay, she can lay up to 2,000 babies a day. Wow. And so as fast as you think that the bees could be failing and dying just naturally, uh, she's supplying more. Now, if you have, have this hive where it's just totally left alone, um, the queen will lay this box, these boxes, completely full of babies. And there won't be much honey, but you'll have lots of bees, which then you can divide up and create tons of colonies from. Uh, so if you're in to, in to the bees with a little group uh, in your family or your neighborhood, you can be sharing it, uh, sharing frames and creating your own queens in the other hives within the month. You could also, now that I think about it, and speaking in terms of self-reliance, you could probably make yourself a little bit of money by selling these brackets out uh, to people that are wanting to start their own colonies. Is that yeah, right? Let's say that somebody in your neighborhood has a top bar hive, which is another style. And there's also a Waré, and there's a deep Langstroth and other Langstroths. Um, all of them require unique ways to have bees on a frame. And every one of them can have failure due to Queen problems and everything. Sure, yeah, anything. But these frames, uh, the size of them fits into every one of those other systems. So you have a friend that has a top bar hive and it goes queenless. Well, that means that they don't have any babies anymore. Uh, you don't need to give your queen, but if you give them one of these frames, you can zip tie this or wire it into their frame, uh -huh. put it into their hive, mm -hmm. and then they'll automatically start within three to five days creating a new queen. Um, it can be put into a Waré hive, it can be put into a, a traditional hive. And so you can actually provide resources to people in your area uh, just by building these up. And, and how convenient would that be? They don't have to send away from them. For, for a them. queen that isn't locally mated, which right. yours will be. Which is kind of nice to have because you've got the, like you said, the flavors and the environment, everything, it's, it's adapted to that area. Very nice, very nice, okay. It's a very easy system. And, and if I think that's- you tell me, this is like the, the easiest system that you could possibly have for starting up. These boxes are absolutely beautiful. They're the best systems for, for uh, kids. They're the best systems for, for, uh, for pets. Um, and these are all handcrafted. They're made out of cedar, did you say? Mm -hmm. Western red cedar. And, uh, and so they're a quality product. Um, would you recommend having them stain it at all or no? Um, there's some people that leave it uh -huh. and it turns a barnyard gray. Mm -hmm. uh, there's others that will take uh, oils and coat the outside. You don't coat the inside. That's for the bees to decide what they do. Okay. Uh, but the outside, <laughs> as soon as you coat it, it looks amazing because it's cedar. Um, and I suggest to coat it because it looks really, really something else. Yeah, this is an art piece in your backyard. Or your, or your patio or deck or, or wherever. I... There, there's some, believe it or not, uh, that don't even put bees in them. <laughs> there's some that put them next to their fireplace yeah. and it's just decoration. Yeah. Uh, there's some that put them in their yard as decoration, but they would act as a swarm lure 
uh, to colonies that might be flying around the neighborhood. Okay. So to have it in your yard, you can have it for many reasons and even outside of the realm of uh, beekeeping. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So just going to wrap this up right now here uh, in our first course on self-reliance and, and uh, beginning beekeeping for the urban urban setting. Um, right now is when you can get this in the next 24 hours. You can get these at, a, at the best price you're going to get them. You're going to get this magazine right here. That's going to take you all the way through how to get started, what other resources there are, a glossary so you know what you're talking about, um, and different ways to contact other people with regards to joining guilds and groups. Uh, and as an additional bonus right now, if you call 801-330-9010, you're going to have an opportunity to get uh, Albert's courses on beekeeping, on beginning beekeeping for 30% off. Now, to make this purchase, you need to go to mondomarkettv.com. And there you'll be able to purchase these beautiful boxes. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off right now. This is Scott Romig. It's been a pleasure being your host today. And we're going to have some more classes on self-reliance soon. So stay tuned and keep checking in with our website. Other than that, have a great day.